Happy Wednesday, you all. So today's class, we're going to get more into the practical elements, like I mentioned on Monday, because this is a writing class. And even though writing involves the aspects of critical thinking and observation and style and kind of examining who we are as individuals and and exploring ethics, all of that, there's also the practical element. And so today we want to go over some strategies for writing. And in particular, we're going to focus on introductions. I think it's useful to break up an essay into its various components and just focus on strategies for each component. Today, Logically, we'll start with intros. The way, that, the way that I like to explore writing is as a process. There is no one way to write an essay. And you really have to find your own style. So the way I instruct this more practical aspect of our course, I just throw out possibilities strategies that you can consider and you can glean and you can mimic if you want or you can play around in your own way. And one of the best ways to really figure out how you're going to cobble the strategies that you think are effective for your own voice is to read, to see what other people have done, to riff off of it, to modify it, to steal. That's what Picasso said. All artists are thieves. And it's true. And we basically make our own methodology out of what we kind of cobble together. I mean, if you think about it, that's all design, right? And writing is a combination of art and design. We design our thoughts, and then we artfully display them in a way that is persuasive and efficacious. So I love examining this. And you know, it's so exciting to watch you all figure out what style is most appropriate and exciting for you. So, introductions. I've also provided a list, if you, if you look at this particular page in the module, <clears throat> below the lecture is basic notes, like an outline for introductions. An introduction is a seduction. You have to think about this. There is a lot of writing out there. And before we can even present our idea, we have to make sure that we're seducing our reader into wanting to read it. I mean, if they aren't compelled in the very beginning by the idea, by your voice, by style, well, then you don't get to persuade them. Obviously, I have to read your essays, but in, in the real world, the things that you write, the arguments that you make, they need to seduce. So think of the intro as the art of seduction. There are four <clears throat> aspects of an intro that should be conveyed. How you do that, of course, is up to you. The four aspects are to gain attention, to elicit relevance for the reader, to establish your own credibility, which we're going to explain what that means really, and then to preview your ideas, right? What we know as perhaps the thesis, that very fancy ugly word. It's kind of an ugly word. Thesis. And a lot of times developing writers are so dry in their intros. They, they just kind of check all the boxes and, and move on. But you're not going to seduce anyone with a dry pickup line, yeah? I mean, if you think about seductions in the real world, you have to, you know, you have to have a little swag. You have to have a style. You have to have your own kind of 
hmm, je ne sais pas. <laughs> um, you need you need to have a life to you, right? Or else you're not going to get the number of the person that you're attracted to. So think about it much in the same way with these intros. So you can kind of look on at the at the list that I've provided below this lecture, and that might be able to help you just kind of follow along. Because there are many different ways that you can achieve gaining attention, getting the relevance of the reader, establishing credibility, and previewing your ideas. Let's start with gaining attention. I've listed six different strategies that you can utilize to kind of open your essay because you need to walk into that club looking fly, right? You need to attract the attention of the person that you want to get the attention from. So you gotta make it pop. And there are different ways to do this. The first one I put is ask questions. I think we can imagine why asking a question at the very beginning of your essay or near the beginning of your essay is useful because immediately the reader becomes tested in, in the paper because they naturally in their mind are trying to answer the question. So that's always a great strategy. Another is just applying the senses, vivid description. Now in the case of our essay, that's going to be easy to do, right? Because you could, you could simply, by utilizing an arsenal of, of vivid descriptive words, you can activate the senses of your reader into the image that you've already decided that you're going to be analyzing for the paper. So that might be a good strategy for many of you. Another one is an anecdote, a little mini story, not too extensive, right? You don't want to you don't want to fall into composing an entire tome of some kind of narrative, but um, you certainly can use snippets of a narrative. We love narrative. We love telling stories. It's one of the ways that we activate the imagination of anybody who is reading. So if you can somehow bring in a narrative device, like an experience that you've had that somehow either relates to the California dream or you tell the story of the image that you're analyzing in some way. Maybe there's kind of a historical component to it, or you talk about the very first time you saw the image, or anything like that. It's amazing how that can activate your reader as well. Number four I have, effective relevant quotation. This is my least favorite, mainly because a lot of people will use, you know, like a famous quote by Mark Twain or or by Leviticus, and they'll just kind of drop it in to the paper as if somehow that lends them credibility, and that's not what you want to do. But if there is a relevant statement that and you know someone has made that really relates to the ideas that you're going to espouse in your paper, great. Uh, for example, uh, I was writing an essay yesterday and Oscar Wilde has this amazing testament. He says that the, oh, now I have to get it right. The critic, the critic has to educate the public. The artist has to educate the critic. And I used it, it's a very clever kind of play on words, and I used it to describe art criticism. Um, so I did use a quote in the intro to the essay that I was writing. But sparingly, everybody. I can't really wink. Sparingly. You don't want to do it just because it's like, oh, here's something I can throw in there, right? Because if you use a stale pickup line in the club, well, that boy or girl is not going to respond, right? You can't go up to him and be like, you have beautiful eyes. Are they real? They're just going to kind of look at you like, mm-hmm, try harder, right? Same thing with us. Same thing with this essay. Try harder. Find something good. All right. Another one is a startling statistic um, or a fact that just kind of throws your reader, 
you know, they're just like, damn. I mean, if you can somehow generate that kind of response, they're going to be invested in, in what it is that you're going to be articulating. So think about what that might look like. I'm trying to think of one myself. When I used to work for uh, the DeKalb Rape Crisis Center in the Atlanta area, and my job was to train the, the people on the phone. It was a phone crisis hotline. I trained them on how to keep people on the phone long enough so that the, the caller would at least acknowledge that what happened to them was not their fault, whether it be sexual or domestic violence. So I used to get trained on, on rhetoric, on how to do this. Um, and my boss sent me to Omaha this, this one weekend. And I was young. I was 24. And I didn't want to go to Omaha. I was in Atlanta. I was in Hotlanta. And I love to dance. So I was... I was bummed, you know, it's like I wanted to go out, I wanted to go out dancing, I wanted to, you know, have fun that weekend, but instead, I was stuck in this kind of like hotel ballroom, you know, with the nasty carpet, and the, the crappy, the, the crappy coffee that kind of tastes like the bottom of the Mississippi scum swamp, you know, and, you know, and those little Dixie cups, and it was early in the morning, you know, things I didn't want to do. But I went to this one seminar at 8 in the morning, not wanting to be there. And the speaker opened with actually a combination of a question and a startling statistic. His question was, what day of the year are there the most reported instances of domestic violence in America? You know, we were all like, New Year's, no. Halloween, no. Uh, St. Patty's Day, no. Someone said Valentine's Day. <laughs> we were like, what world do you live in? But we kept trying to answer the question, you know, thinking logically. The answer, Super Bowl Sunday. And maybe you're having the same response. It's like, what? And then, oh, that totally makes sense, right? You are either drunk and your team won, so you're full of, you know, this kind of like um, heightened masculinity, <laughs> or your team lost and you're pissed. And even though hopefully none of us would ever resort to violence as a response to a game where people are just throwing around a ball, we can understand why it happens. And then he said four times as many reports than on any average day of the year occur during Super Bowl Sunday. And that piece of data woke me up. I was like, damn, it says so much about our culture. And so I immediately was invested in this eight in the morning uh, seminar talk that I didn't want to go to because I couldn't go to, you know, vinyl club instead. Keep that in mind. That's what we want to do. That's seduction. And then the last one in the gaining attention. If you are good with your timing, humor is amazing. Um, if you can utilize humor in your intro, great. But just remember, and you know how it is, being picked up by some dork who doesn't have a good sense of humor but tries to be funny, it hurts, right? Yeah, you just feel bad for them. The same with an essay. So if you want to try to do it, do it. And this is the, the time to experiment. So let's try out your humor, yeah? Okay. The second aspect of an intro that we all need to somehow convey in, in the paper is reader relevance. And this is a little bit more straightforward. 
there are, are basically three strategies that you can employ, and some of them collapse together. It just depends on how you employ the strategy. The first one is to frame a topic within a larger issue. So the point of reader relevance is to make sure that they, after you've somehow got their attention, that they are, are going to be interested in this particular uh, topic. And maybe they're not. You know, maybe the topic itself doesn't necessarily appeal to them. So you have to work hard to make sure that they still want to read despite the fact that they think that the topic is not compelling. Again, seduction, right? So by framing the topic within a larger issue, you might be able to grab them. For example, someone might not be interested necessarily in domestic violence, going with my last idea, but they might be interested in the American conceptions of masculinity and, and what that looks like, right? Or maybe they're interested in violence in general, or maybe they're interested in just uh, the American affect of, you know, something like the Super Bowl. Uh, who knows, right? But you want to try to tie it to something that they might be interested in. Um, and most things are related, right? I mean, I think that the great thing about writing is that as we write, we discover just how much things are connected. And the more we understand that, the more we begin to feel like we have a place in the universe. So it's actually a really good exercise to try to relate any topic that you have to something larger. I mean, obviously, we're doing that, right? You're looking at an image and relating it to something as large as the California dream. But maybe you come to understand that the American dream is the exact same thing. Who knows? So that a reader in Vermont who has never set foot in California and is terrified by earthquakes is still going to read your essay because it somehow ties in to this kind of larger macrocosmic idea of what America is. Maybe. Maybe. Another one that's great to incur the relevance of the reader is a current event or an issue. So if we're reading the news or something is in the imagination of us right now, like climate change is a huge one right now, right? Because it's being debated by um, the different forces that comprise the American imagination. So, you know, if you connected it to climate change or, you know, what if you connected this idea of the California dream to the recent fires that have erupted? And of course, that might have something to do with climate change as well. Or maybe, you know, another issue is this idea of fake news and how we represent our dream, you know, through the media. Who knows? Something like that. Another one is to relate directly to the reader. And this requires you to kind of know who your readership is. Now, in this case, you know that your readership are other students. So you know that they are all related to San Francisco. You know that they are also related to college life and the shared experience of going to an elite liberal arts university like the University of San Francisco. So you can play with those things and you can relate directly to the reader because you know that that's who your audience is. Think about how you could do that. Because there's a way. Think about how the California dream resides in individuals who are just now beginning their adult journey to find what their dream is. Imagine how you can tether those concepts together to make a reader, namely you all, want to read your essay. Think about that. Knowing your audience is a fantastic way to access their curiosity. The third aspect of an introduction is establishing the writer credibility. Now, that sounds like you are establishing your, your knowledge or you know, that you have the authority to write on this issue. And not exactly. You don't want to be arrogant. As a matter of fact, American readers do not like their writers to have too much confidence in what they are writing. Um, indeed, we are, in general, a humble culture. And we, we like our writers to demonstrate a humility in their work. So 
don't get cocky. It tends to turn us off. I mean, think about the club, right? You know, that guy walks up and he's like super swaggy, right? And he's like, so, you know, you just want to throw the drink in their face. Well, hopefully you do. All right. So establishing credibility. Two ways that you could do that. One is to relate the issue to the writer. So much like we were trying to, in the last aspect, relate to the reader, now relate to the writer. Because the reader wants to know, like, why the hell are you writing this essay? Like, and maybe you can tell them, you know, I am, I am here in California. I am pursuing this California dream. I buy into it enough that I want to investigate it to see if it truly is what it, what it sets out to be, right? Or I grew up in California. I've been surrounded by permutations of the dream and, and I'm interested in unpacking them, right? Or you could, you could share the experience of the writer. And it's kind of similar, right? I've lived in California my whole life. That would be sharing an experience. Or sharing, sharing a moment where the, the ideas of your essay are somehow activated. You know, maybe a conversation with your mother while you were on a boat in the Outer Banks in North Carolina, and you're scrolling through your Instagram, and you see Kim Kardashian's new butt lift, and it sparks you to wonder why, why people in Hollywood are so image obsessed. And then you realize that you also have wanted a butt lift, and you wonder why. And you talk to your mom about that, and she's like, well, just go to California to find out. That would be sharing your experience. It's a really bad example, but bear with me. But that's establishing your credibility. So in fact, you're trying to create a relationship between you and the reader. Um, and you're saying, I'm writing this essay because fill in the blank. Cool? And then lastly, previewing the ideas. And I mean, this is what a lot of times we think of as a thesis. But notice I give you three options. And this really depends on the kind of writer that you are. You could give an explicit thesis. And we'll talk more about what that is. But a thesis is comprised of a position, an argument, right? And a rationale, your reasoning for that argument. So, you know, I hate olives. That is your position. I hate olives because, and whatever you fill in is your rationale. They are salty. They, they feel funny in my mouth. And they, they don't look natural. <laughs> I love olives, but those three, those three um, explanations of why you hate olives is the rationale, right? And you can just do it. You can, you can, make that thesis explicit. This image relates to the California dream because, sure, if that's the kind of person you are, go for it. If that feels comfortable, go for it. But also know that there are other ways to write a thesis that aren't necessarily so straightforward and explicit. And in fact, a lot of the most well-developed essay writings that we're going to read in the class don't do that. It doesn't mean it's bad or good, it's just style. Right? The, another, kind is, another kind of thesis is the implicit thesis, where you just kind of allude to the position, I hate olives, and you allude to the rationale without necessarily explicitly stating it. So um, we'll talk more about what that is when, uh, when we're meeting in person because we're going to talk about the finessing of theses. Theses. Ugh. All right. Then um, the last one I have here is a guiding question. Now, this is what a lot of writers do, um, especially more established writers, where they ask a question that is explicit enough to kind of have the, the reader know the topic in general, but they ask the question as a way to kind of create a journey. So instead of just explicitly stating what it is you're going to argue, 
you allude to the argument through, through asking a question or a series of questions that kind of direct us in that path. And then you can utilize the rest of the essay as kind of this exploration, like the writer is trying to answer the question. And indeed you are, but you probably know the answer by the time you're writing the essay, but you're allowing the reader to go on the journey with you that you took. And, and that is a very compelling way to articulate a, a thesis because you're not laying everything out for the reader. You're, giving, you're still giving them intrigue, yeah? Seduction. You don't want to just drop trow in the middle of the club, right? You, wanna, you still want to make them be like, hmm, I want to see what this person is all about, yeah? We love that kind of mystery and intrigue, especially in seduction. So those are the four main elements of an intro. Um, the, th the first three being more of the strategies. So what I'm asking you to do for the discussion question for today is you've already read Lindsay Taylor's Matterhorn. <clears throat> that was assigned. And if you haven't, you know, please read it. <clears throat> and it's a student example of the very paper that we're, we're going to be writing. And I wanted you to see an example so that you can kind of look at what strategies this writer is employing and how you would critique this writer. So after you've read Taylor's Matterhorn, um, answer the questions in, in the discussion. There are three. What strategies that we've talked about in this lecture and that are listed below the lecture, what strategies uh, does Taylor employ in her introduction that you think are most effective, right? So, you know, answer. She gains attention by, and then identify the, the thing in the paper that she is doing. Like, be specific about it. You know, don't, don't talk about it in generalities, because the more specific we are, the more it tethers to our, our mind. And this is going to help us develop as writers. Then the second question is, employ another introduction strategy to Taylor's essay that you think would make it more dynamic. So one that she has not done or another example of one that she has done um, that you think would be even more useful to dynamize the experience of reading. So this is you generating strategies. You can see where this goes. Because then the third question generates some possibilities for your own essay by attempting to apply the introduction strategies that we've just listed um, to your topic. So what I'm asking you to do is come up with a strategy, a specific one, for gaining attention, so any of the six, or a combination thereof, the reader relevance, any of the three, and then establishing your credibility, any of the two. Um, you just need one, but make it specific. Um, try to think about your topic and for your own for your own essay, and we're beginning to generate some introduction strategies that you might employ in the eventual writing of the paper. So by breaking our essays down in components like this that are exercises that can be really generative, we start to create a style. We start to create a true experience because we're thinking about the parts rather than the whole. When we whole, that can be overwhelming because there's a lot of things that you're trying to do in an essay. Break it up. Break it up. That's what we're doing. So this is the discussion question for today. And if you complete that by the end of the day, that would be fantastic. Um, and then <clears throat> for Friday's class, <coughs> um, I'm asking you to look at one of my essays because we're gonna we're going to examine compelling conclusions, because that's another thing that a lot of uh, developing writers have challenges with, intros and conclusions. So we're going to be reading my essay and looking at concluding strategies for that, as well as just style. Because on Friday, in addition to looking at conclusions, we're also going to be looking at how do we make something like an analysis personal. 
because we want our essays to have a personal component to them. We want them to feel human and humane. So we're going to be looking at how we can do that, how we can access ourselves to make an analysis at once intellectually compelling, but also personally compelling for the reader. So we're going to be reading that essay, and then we're also going to be looking at a video, just a three-minute piece by Gabrielle Calvacaresi, who is one of my favorite writers of all time and does this incredible job with examining a photograph of the famous celebrities Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw. And we'll talk about that more later. Um, but that'll be in Friday's class. Okay? Please have those, or please have read my essay, and then we'll go into the video lecture um, for Friday. If you have any questions, as usual, please shoot me an email or a text or call or any mediated version. Um, otherwise, have fun. Enjoy this exercise, and I'll see you Friday.